<clears throat> well, guys, we still got some time on the clock. Do you guys want to do a round of guess the etymology? Ooh, sure. Etymology. <laughs> <laughs> this really hooks the viewers, I know. <laughs> All right, let's get some etymology. <laughs> yeah, these aren't our highest viewed uh, videos, but uh, they're fun. They're fun. Who wants to watch me eat donuts? <laughs> oh, you already did that. Okay, do you guys know the origin of the phrase blue blood? Blue blood. I know it's like purebreds. I think it probably has to do with like crabs or something. It's like people of pure blood of of like royalty or something. I think it has to do with lobsters. I'm going with lobsters. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, they allegedly have blue blood, right? So, yeah, the meaning is noble birth. The origin, saying that some ha- uh, saying that some has blue blood comes from the Middle Ages, where it was believed that those who had pale skin, meaning their ancestors uh, have not intermarried with darker skin partners, were noble or aristocrat. <laughs> oh, How long ago did this start? <laughs> <laughs> the main reasoning behind it is that when your skin is really pale, the veins are more visible and they usually look quite blue. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, I remember when we were kids, like, mom told us that, like, um, you know, people, like, our our blood inside is blue, but then when we bleed, it's immediately, like, comes in contact with oxygen, and that's what turns it red. I was listening to a podcast, and supposedly that's total bullshit. Yeah, I've heard yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> I have heard that, like, um, like, octopuses and stuff, though, they have, like, a bu- blood that's, um, instead of having iron, it has copper, so they actually have, like, green blood. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I think I may have heard that as well. Um, do, do you ever wonder, like, some of the things, like, your parents told you when you were kids? <laughs> like, how much of it is, like, total bullshit? A fair amount. And the thing is, I, I don't know, maybe it's a blessing, maybe it's a curse, but, like, like at a certain age, I realized, like, there was, like, a fair amount of stuff that I was told that was wrong, and then, like... Like, once that was wrong, like, I had to question, like, everything. It's like, I didn't believe anything anymore. I was just like, nothing's true. It's all been a pack of lies. <laughs> you know, another one mom used to tell us that, like, I suspect it's probably bullshit, but I, uh, who knows. Is she, she said, like, every time you sneeze, your heart skips a beat. So, like, if you were to sneeze, like, so many times in a minute, you could die. <laughs> I probably should have died by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sneeze in yeah, packs, man. Just, yeah, the- they just come in groups. Okay, the next one. Every cloud has a silver lining. I mean, that's got to be directly from clouds <laughs> in the sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. The, so the meaning, negative occurrence may have a positive, positive aspect to it. The origin. The expression can be traced directly from a piece written by, in 1634 by English poet John Milton called uh, Comus, uh, A Mask Presented at Ludlow Castle. Uh, he spoke of a silver lining of brightness behind a gloomy cloud, and soon afterward, Milton's clouds became a staple of English literature. The pro- proverb, every cloud has a silver lining, eventually came into being in the 1800s, a time of optimism and positivity in the upper classes of Victorian England. Hmm. Okay. Uh, next, the whole nine yards. I believe this is from that Matthew Perry, Bruce Willis movie. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> there was comical tension. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe people like walk nine yards for like a wedding ceremony or something. Okay. I mean, I'm guessing it's a measurement of cloth or something. Let's see. So the meaning, to do everything that is possible or available. Origin. During World War II, pilots would have a nine-yard chain of ammunition. When a fighter pilot used all their ammunition on one target, they would give the whole nine yards. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's an, actually an interesting one. I, I, I kind of like that one. Yeah, yeah, I would not have guessed that one. I like I like the ones that came like into being like, like 50 years ago. I'm like, right. <laughs> I'd, I would never have guessed that. Uh, the next one, sleep tight. Sleep Don't tight. The <laughs> bed bugs bite. That, that's got to be a, some sort of military thing. Like, they wrap themselves up tight to keep... Oh, like tighten the cover? Stuff out, yeah. Sleep tight. 
I don't know. I just think of like the lull by uh, whatever bedtime story. Uh, so the meaning, sleep well, uh, said to someone when parting uh, from them at night. Uh, the origin, it is believed that the saying comes from Shakespeare, another Billy Shakespeare. Uh, oh, okay, from Shakespeare's time. <laughs> when mattresses were secure. William <laughs> Shakespeare, his unknown brother. <laughs> yes. Uh Okay, when mattresses were secured by ropes. During that time, sleeping tight meant sleeping with the ropes pulled tight, making a well-sprung bed. Okay. How were mattresses secured by ropes? Is it like hay tied up with a rope? Well, you something? have like the frame and you tie ropes across and you lay whatever on top. Oh, yeah. oh I see. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that would suck because I, I suppose after a time of laying on those, like the ropes would loosen up mm -hmm. and you'd have to like retighten them. That would be a pain in the ass. Uh, next, piece of cake. It was a piece of cake. I don't know. I mean, cake's been I'm going to go Marie Antoinette somehow. I don't know. <laughs> Let them have their cake. <laughs> if this ends up being Marie Antoinette. Um, Let's see. So, meaning something easily achieved. Origin. The saying piece of cake comes from American poet, another poet, Ogden Nash, who in 1930 was quoted saying, life's a piece of cake. Some of these are just but like, not oh, one of those gross cakes. A random person said it. Yeah. Uh, next, spill the beans. Spill the oh, beans. Oh, The Office and Kevin. That was a heartbreak. That was a heartbreaking scene. <laughs> oh right, I forgot about that. I loved that scene. I was like, oh, I felt so bad for Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> he's going on. He's like talking and talking and talking about how much he loves these beans and all his techniques and all this stuff. And then you know, you're like, you know, he's gonna spill it, <laughs> but it still feels bad. <laughs> uh, any guesses on spill the beans? No, I don't know how spilling <laughs> the beans would actually connect to like telling secrets. Yeah. Well, let's, <laughs> unless like you cook, you cooked like a mouse into your beans. <laughs> he spilled the beans. Let's the find secrets yeah. out. The secret ingredient is rats. So yeah, the meaning uh, reveals secret information unintentionally or indiscreetly. Origin: the saying that comes from ancient Greece. Where voting was done using beans. Oh, I was actually thinking about this. Uh, I thought it was like little small stones, though. Okay. Uh, it says citizens would put a white bean into the jar of a candidate they support and a black one for a candidate they do not approve of. So once again, black is... <laughs> goes back all the way. <laughs> uh, however, on a few occasions, clumsy people would spill the jars, revealing, revealing classified information. Anecdote about uh, spilling the beans and, and uh, mystery meat. I was in the army in the field, and there's like this mess uh, tent or whatever. I went in there, and the guy, he's like scooping out and dishing to everybody as we go go down the line. And like he gives me, he picks up this scoop, and there's like this giant chunk of meat in there. And he looks at it, and he like, he sets it aside. He's like, not sure what that was. <laughs> 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 Just keeps scooping. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> not sure what that was. <laughs> it's not what you want to hear. <laughs> I like. I wanted that meat. <laughs> that was chihuahua. That was, that was the choice chunk of meat, right? That was, there. Yeah, that was, Nobody else got a piece of meat like that. That was the fillet. <laughs> fillet o' rot. Oh, I think I actually know this next one. Uh, pull out all the stops. So this is like, um, I believe, like those old like um, hydraulic like organs, mm -hmm. like to change the the pitch on them. Like you would pull out these things they call stops. So like if you were to play like a very complicated tune, you might have to pull out all the stops. Hmm. So meaning make a very great effort to achieve something. Origin. Organ consoles have knobs. They're it would have been great if you were wrong after yeah, that. That, would that be elaborate funny. like <laughs> <laughs> description. <laughs> um, organ consoles have knobs that are called stops. Without them, an organist can play at a much higher uh, volume. So pulling out all the stops would let the organist squeeze the maximum volume out of the instrument. Have you ever thought about playing an organ to, to extract the maximum volume? <laughs> <laughs> done and done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next one, run amok. Amok, amok, amok. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, you beat me. 
You, you beat both of us to it. God damn. <laughs> By the so, way, that, that's coming out. out this month, it's right? Out. It's already out. Oh, it's out. Did you we're, watch gonna, it? we're gonna wait till the October thirty first. We're gonna wait. Ooh. You will not wait that long. Okay. Ah, we're gonna try. Jai doesn't care about it, so he's he's fine waiting. So I don't know. We we both have our hard set on watching me and Rumman, but uh, uh, we're trying to hold out. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Might watch tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Any guesses on where that phrase comes from? Besides Hocus Pocus. Run <laughs> a muck. A muck. I mean, it sounds like muck would be like mud, running into mud or something. I'm not actually sure alone what the word a muck means. Yeah. Does it mean like a foul? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> um, let's see. So meaning, behave uncontrollably and disruptively. Origin. The saying comes from the Malaysian word a muck which describes the bizarre behavior of tribesmen who, under the influence of opium, would become wild and attack people. Wait, I thought opium was like a sedative. No. Not for these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give them weed. God knows. <laughs> Sounds like more like they were on cocaine or something. Right, yeah. yeah. Cocaina. Crystal meth or something. Uh, the next one, resting on laurels. Laurel's a girl, and, uh, <laughs> and, and hard you rested on it. <laughs> um, meaning, be so satisfied with what one has already achieved that one makes no further effort. Origin, since ancient Greece, laurel branches symbolized victory and success. The plan was closely tied to Apollo, the god of music. I thought Apollo was like the god of the sun. Yeah, yeah, but some of them too. have more than one. Oh, okay. Um, oh, the God of Music, Prophecy, and Poetry. Laurel branches were given to victorious athletes in ancient Greece and later to generals who won important battles. Thus the term laureates and the phrase resting on laurels. In, uh, in the 19th century, the term received a negative connotation to describe those who are overly satisfied with their achievements. Hmm. Uh, the next, eat humble pie. Eat humble pie. Doesn't it just mean to be humbled? I mean, that's what it means, but where does it come from? Eat humble pie? <laughs> I mean, maybe somebody made the shittiest pie in this what, village. And What was that? Uh, <laughs> the movie where, like, it was a white girl being raised by, like, black maids and stuff, and, like, uh, one of the maids, like, took a shit the in the pie. The help. She mm. took a shit in the pie and, like, fed it to this white woman. Oh, I didn't know that. That That's humble pie. <laughs> <laughs> that's humble pie. <laughs> I think it's like a guy that's really, like, bragging about how he 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 eats a lot of pussy. And, <laughs> and then, like, he eats, like, a really bad one. <laughs> and, and they're like, ugh, not so the bragging. The most humble of pies. <laughs> <laughs> this humbled me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the meaning, make a humble apology and accept humiliation. Origin, in the, back in the Middle Ages again, uh, there would be a huge feast after a hunt. The lord of the manor would receive the finest piece of meat, and the ones with the lower status would eat a pie filled with entrails and innards, <laughs> which were also known as umbles. <laughs> those, <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> those who would eat the umble pie were considered to be humiliated since it symbolized lower status. <laughs> the humble pie, the umble pie. What a disgusting description. A, a pie filled with entrails and innards. <laughs> well, at least they weren't like wasting anything, you know? <laughs> I, I mean, that's like uh, humble you know, pie. The South, it, it, uh, you know, they're in slave times. Is like the poor people got like the shitty stuff. They got the entrails. They got the fucking, mm -hmm. you know, offal. They got the the intestines and fucking what do they call that? Chitlins. I don't know what that is though. Chitlins is like chopped intestine. Oh, yeah. I've heard of oxtail. I don't know what exactly that is, but it's literally the tail, of the ox. It's the just tail? like like a tough bony piece of uh, whatever you throw in a. It's very super... popular. Like, it's well, popular. like mo most tough cuts of meat, like if if you put them in like a stew or something, and you like like let them cook for a long time, they're supposed to be pretty flavorful. Okay, but like, there's also like a, a cheap cut. Mm. 
Man, I, I don't really watch reality television, but years ago when they had that wrestling like Legends House show, I did watch that where they put a bunch of old wrestlers in like a house. And Tony Atlas was cooking. Is it Chitlins? You said is like the probably intestines? Chitlins. It smells like shit. Yeah, and like it is shit. Yeah, everyone was complaining about it, but I remember being so grossed out because he was like making them. And he's and he's like, you got to get all these doo doo balls out of here. And he's like squeezing the oh, shit out no. of them. I'm like, how can you eat this? <laughs> <laughs> you cannot get those clean. So like literally, you, he's like wringing the shit right, out of it, right. washing it out, right, and then like, right. Pretty that, sure you have to boil it, right? I, I mean, if you're just like a polite human being, like even if you are like, <laughs> th- if this is your thing, like the polite thing is to fucking take it outside. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and even then, whew. Uh, I, I mean, like the anecdote is like, you know, you got to wash the shit out of them. <laughs> Literally. Right. Yeah. Uh, 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 no thanks. It's not... <laughs> I, who, and who wants to go through that much trouble to like make something they're gonna eat? Like, <laughs> right. I'm so hard like I up. Spent hours preparing this. I'm so hard up. I'm, I'm gonna make something that I have to squeeze the shit out of. <laughs> I mean, I've watched a lot of travel shows. <laughs> like, where... how, well, how cheap do you have to be? You'd be like, <laughs> listen, how much for that? <laughs> this was four cents a pound. <laughs> this was a steal. He's like, don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah, four cents. A pound. I've watched a lot of travel shows, like in those uh, Southeast Asian countries, like uh, like Indonesia, places like that. Like they have like a lot of intestines that they eat over there. They they. Cook them, grill them up, and stuff. I, I I mean, if you're like indigenous or something, if if you're like if that's, I can see it being part of your culture, especially if you're like trying to live off the land or something. Yeah, if you're in a third world country, I get it. But if, if you you're in Legends like, House, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Legendary. It's a choice. <laughs> can you imagine like? Well, like, what if you grow up in a poor household and, like, uh, that's what your mom cooks, and you're just like, just like mom used to make, <laughs> nice and shitty. <laughs> Where do you even get those from? Like, you can get those from a normal grocery store? You'd probably have to go to a butcher. Actually, I think, well, I went to Winco, and I was looking at tongue, and, like, I, I, I was like, oh, tongue, I bet that's cheap, and, I, like, I pulled out a tongue, and it was pretty expensive, I was like... How, oh, yeah. Why is tongue this expensive? It's H- tongue. Hispanic people use it in their uh, tacos, I, I think. Uh, it's very good, actually. Like, it's supposed to be... Yeah, I've heard it's very good. Mm-hmm. But, like, it, it's the same thing. Like, you have to cook it for a while. You, like, it, it takes some time and effort. But, like, next to that, I think there was, like, um, like cubed uh, intestine, I think, in there. Don't they call it, like, tripe or something? Tri- or, tripe, yeah, same thing. Tripe is intestine. Um, final one for today, hands oh. down. Oh, go ahead. Something I would like to try is like real haggis. Oh, you would not. You, why? Uh, I, I, even <laughs> if I hated it, I'd like to try it. I'd like to watch you try it. Yeah, I'd watch you try it. Too. <laughs> I wonder if I can get some haggis. I bet you. I mean, this is a big city. I bet you there's some restaurant that serves it here. Yeah. Well, I know it's like traditionally Scottish. Do you think like an Irish pub might have haggis? Yeah, racist. <laughs> what is it? I mean, you guys just saying you got haggis, right? <laughs> no, no, you you wouldn't want to call it Irish person Scottish. <laughs> they would not like that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying they both might uh, dabble in the same culinary field. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> the thing is, if I went to like an Irish pub, I'd want like a like a uh, a freaking uh, shepherd's pie, probably. Yeah, shepherd's pie I could deal with. Shepherd's That's fine. Pie I like good. shepherd's pie. I'd probably try it if they had it. If I saw them both and I saw a haggis, I'd be like, I need to try that haggis. Well, let's let's do some additional YouTube content. We'll have you we'll videotape you eating haggis. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is like, well, some of those some of those things you can't even buy like in certain areas. Like they're technically illegal. Yeah, if there's like health code violations against them, mm. then what can you yeah. do? How can you even get a haggis? Get. You can't even drink raw milk. Make it like you ship it over frozen somehow. Yeah. Who wants to drink raw milk? I don't. I drink raw milk. I drink half and half. I've drank like just straight cream, so I'd probably be okay. I used to drink a lot of milk. I used. To oh drink- man, yeah. When I was a kid, I drank. Apparently, it's not healthy for you, so I shouldn't have drank so much. <laughs> but when you're a kid, they're like. 
drink milk. It makes your bones healthy and strong. Yeah, those milk people were great at marketing. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, like they've studied like long living cultures, and a lot of them will drink like a, a glass of wine or something. Yeah, but also like blood. one of the longest lived ones is like um, some of those populations in like Salt Lake. Like they they'll drink a lot of milk, and that was like one of the like those blue zone groups of people who live life for a long time. So I don't know if milk's really all that bad. How do you know it wasn't all those extra wives? <laughs> <laughs> I would I would think that would not. Uh, <laughs> increase your longevity <laughs> like men live like 10 years less than women on average anyway that's true and that's probably from being around just one woman on average <laughs> <laughs> I, I i don't know if that's healthy or not actually uh, aren't people who are like in like dedicated like um relationships they actually do on average live longer maybe but right after one of their partners dies the other one dies immediately it seems that does seem like pretty common where yeah. like yeah one person dies and then it's just like it's a trauma and then then the other person will die relatively yeah. soon yeah i could see that yeah actually i remember remember like just like a while back they had that horrible shooting in that texas town that school or whatever like one of the teachers or whatever they got shot like her husband died like a little bit later just yeah, like, I, I mean, it's like, I think a lot of people will actually go through like a physical shock stage yeah. just from being around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, last one, guys. Hands down. That's got to be some sort of military surrender sort of thing. Hands down. Generally indicates like the best of something, right? Hands down. I'm wondering if it might be a poker term. Maybe. Oh, maybe. like you check your cards and like they're good. You put your hand down, and then you just like don't have to worry about it. It's all good. It's all good. I'm gonna say it's a vote thing. Like uh, hands up if you you know agree or disagree sort of thing. Hands down. I don't know. Maybe okay, okay. So the meaning easily and decisively without question. Origin. Hands down is an idiom born from the world of horse racing. Think about it. You are so far ahead of the chasing pack that you, as the jockey, can sit back, relax, and still win the race, even without your hands on the reins. Winning at a canter is a similar expression, also from the track, but this one is better hands down. Hmm. So, like, you kind of have the right idea with the poker thing. Like, oh, I put my hands down, I don't have to worry about it, but it was from horse racing. Like, even if my... If if the jockey raced my horse was in the front and he put his hands down, I'd be like, "You fucking jackass! <laughs> you took a chance. You man. took a chance. <laughs> you were gambling with my money." I think out of this group, I, I like the humble pie and I like the whole nine yards with the the nine yards of bullets. Nine like, yards of bullets. Yeah. Those are my favorite ones of this group. 